Yes, this is a, a six-year-old little girl, and you can see that she has a pupillary membrane with persistence, you know, from her embryologic failure to regress. As a result, she has a central opacity and all these iris strands and decreased vision as a result of that. So our goal is to cut the strands and perform a capsulorexis around the outside of that, remove the lens, and place a focusing lens implant. The key will be to remove those without rupturing the capsule. So, as in all children, I perform a, a little conjunctival pyridomy and we'll do a scleral tunnel incision and we will plan to place a suture at the end. We probably will make several paracenteses to allow access for our micro scissors to cut little membranes, those little strands. And so just performing a scleral tunnel. So you can see I've switched to a forceps that doesn't have teeth. This is very gentle for handling conjunctiva. A lot of glaucoma surgeons actually use this because it's very gentle and it also won't tear up the wound. So we go in just into clear cornea. Now I'll take a uh, paracentesis knife. And so we want to try and make some of these incisions in locations that will help us to um, lice these little membranes all the way around. So most of the, I'll probably be able to access most of them from the superior area. Um, I might need to get a little bit over this way. So we'll probably make one sort of over here. And one over here. And I'm gonna actually, the eye's gotten quite soft, so we're gonna go ahead and fill this with the, with the OVD, with the vis coat. And you can see, I'm just gonna come up underneath here and sort of lift this up. You can see that I can lift this and actually inject viscoelastic underneath those strands, which will make it much easier for me to cut them. And I'm not going to go all the way in with the keratome because I want to have a fairly maintained uh, chamber. So I just sort of wiggle the knife a little bit to the point. You can just see the tip, and that's where we'll enter. And again, I'm not going to go all the way in for the full length at the moment because I want to work through a fairly small incision. I'm going to take the vis coat back and put a little bit now under these little strands so that I can cause some separation. So these are disposable micro scissors and you can see that they're, they're very tiny little blades and we're just going to walk around and cut them all off right at the edge of the pupil. and just have to be very careful to avoid hitting the capsule. So I'm lifting up every time I make a cut.
one left over on this side. So now it might be a little easier to go through and you can see the scissors is so small that it will fit through a paracentesis. So we've actually cleared that pretty well. If you remember, I didn't make a full incision with the keratome, I opened it just slightly. So now we'll go ahead and open this to the full extent so that we can get our INA in. I don't think we'll have to do much FACO. So now we'll go all the way in, create the entire incision. Now I'll take the uh, capsular rexus forceps, please. I will bend the cystotome. I just wanna see if I can peel this off. Now you can see this really isn't going to peel off. If it tears a little bit, I really don't care because I can, that's where I'll start the capsular rexus. So now I'll take a little more viscoat. And we'll just fill this and then we'll do the capsular rexus. So we were quite successful. You can see all along little tiny bleeding spots all along the iris. So I'll bend my cystotome. And again, we just have to make sure that we make our capsular rexus, which won't be too difficult, um, larger than the size of that membrane. So I still think we can start pretty much in the uh, center. Now the capsular rexus forceps. And again, this will be very elastic. And so we're just gonna go very slowly because we don't want this to tear out to the periphery. We wanna make it large enough, but not too big. Those of you who have done animal surgery on pig eyes, the capsule in a child is very much like that. So you can see we've incorporated the membrane within the capsular rexus. And so because this is gonna be very soft, we're just gonna use INA. We, INA, we don't need any FACO, we don't need any FACO power. So once again, we'll use continuous irrigation. And I could have hydro dissected, I suppose but it's really not gonna be necessary because it's soft enough, it's like doing INA for cortex. And we just sort of work around, it'll, as we thin it out, it'll fold in on its, out, on its own. We don't really have to go much outside the middle. So we'll remove some of the little strands of cortex under polish. I do like to get these lens epithelial cells in young children because again, I think it prevents some, or decreases some inflammation, decreases the chance of capsular phimosis as well. And uh, again, children are very similar 
in their inflammatory response to some of those conditions like pseudoxfoliation. So again, I think it's important, even when you do something fairly simple, like put ProVisc in a couple of important principles, take and you, you want to get the air out, so you want to see just a little bit, and then you want to just put it right at the wound so that you don't catch the iris. You, you can did. see there's a little bleeding off to the right there. And so now we'll put the lens in and you can visualize the lens. You should always take a look at the lens in the cartridge to make sure that the orientation is correct and that the haptics are tucked. And so I like to just rotate these lenses a little bit. And then we'll go to the viscoelastic setting on our INA, which it is at, and we will remove the viscoelastic first. And this is why I like to use ProVisc for this step because it's much easier to remove than viscoat. And then I like to just push the lens down a little bit to seat it at the base of the capsule. Sort of forgot, better plan is to put the suture in and then take the viscoelastic out. And here the capsules capture just a little bit. That happens sometimes. And so the thing to do is just to tap it down and uncapture it. And we'll just put in a little X suture in here. And then again, just kind of get it out from underneath the tenons there. Tenons is very thick in, in children. And so it doesn't have to be a very tight suture, just enough to oppose the wound so that if they rub it in the first few days, it uh, will hold. That'll soften up. I'll take a, just a little scissors. I'll just cut the tenons a little bit. Just sort of estimate where we want this to be closed, but we want to make it a good closure, makes it come more comfortable for the, for the patient. And again, this is tenons here, so we really want to try and get to the conjunctiva, which is really here, to close that. We can incorporate a little tenons which is fine and we'll again try and bury the suture so that it's not uncomfortable even though it's vicral which is much uh, more comfortable than say a nylon suture or a proline suture And she's got the same condition I think I mentioned in the other eye. So I think it's going to be important for her other eye to get operated on reasonably soon again, probably within the month, so that we don't interrupt her binocular vision. 
So you can see that the cataract part of this procedure is really the, the minor part of it that's removing that membrane and providing a clear avenue for light to pass through, which she now has and should have significantly improved vision. I believe her vision was somewhere in the 2100 neighborhood. And then you can see that the, that the lens is still captured in the capsule a little bit down inferiorly. And then let me have the BSS and a syringe one last time. So we'll just reestablish the correct intraocular pressure. And there we go.